We are in the boogie down Bronx, baby. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. DJ Ralph McDaniel schooling out on the set. Yo, Uncle Ralph out there. Yo, what's good, Uncle Ralph? What's up, Ralph? What's up, Uncle Ralph? It's your boy Flip the Narrow. Fabulous. Fat Joe to uh, ULE. And we live on the Hush Hip Hop Tour. You know? <laughs> Ralph McDaniels, you know what it is, Hush Hip Hop Tours. We are in the Bronx, baby. Big up to the early pioneers. I'm talking about Grandmaster Flash, Africa Bambada, and of course, Cool Hurt, the originals that put it down. We're gonna get some food, we're gonna find out how it's going down right here in the Bronx. Uncle Ralph, it's the Hush Hip Hop Tours. This is gonna be crazy. Big up all my people, what up? Wepa! <laughs> Welcome to 1520 Cedric Avenue. We are in the Boogie Down Bronx. This is where it all started. Cool Herc, my man, DJ, entrepreneur. It was all of these kids that had no opportunities, nowhere to go, and Cool Herc opened up the center and they had a party right here in this building over 40 years ago. This was the birthplace of hip hop. B-boys and B-girls hit the floor when breakbeats started playing. Big up to all the pioneers that were in the building. This is hip hop right here. This is the groundbreaking area where it all went down. Big up to all my people out there representing from the Bronx. No one thought that hip hop would go on to be a billion dollar business. All going down right here, a small block. Nobody knew. Now it's all around the world. Uh-oh, Boogie Down Bronx, Fat Joe is in the building. Yes, what up? Yo, yo, Rob, what's up, Rob? I'm in the Bronx, I'm by Yankee Stadium. Then I said, we gotta get Joe on the line, of course. Man, listen, you ain't gotta see me, you discovered me. So it's an honor for me to come to Lou Rock McDaniels, you know what I'm saying? We from the Bronx, New York, things happen. And I always catch up with my man, Fat Joe, be long. Hey Joe, what makes the Bronx so different than some of the other boroughs when it comes to the music and the culture in general? Hip hop started out poor people music. It was the music of the oppressed. And then people were doing so bad. I wish you could show some footage of the Bronx in the 70s when it started, the 80s when it started. It would look like a war zone. All we would do is dance when we were stressed out or had a problem. All we knew how to do was dance. Yes, sir. Cool Herc brought out that music and everybody start dancing. And then the thing just led into the art form. One of the biggest natural resources in the world uh, called hip hop. Lean back, lean back, come on. I said, my nuts don't dance, we just pull up a pants and do the rock away. Now lean back, lean back, lean back, lean back, come on. Let's talk about one of your protégés the great big pun. Incredible artist. Tell us what big pun is and what he meant to the Bronx. I'll tell you a story. One day I was walking through a festival and they were selling t-shirts, Bob Marley, Tupac, and they had a big pun there. So I watched a, a Latino brother and his son stop. And I, they didn't know I was there. I was just walking through. And he asked his son, he said, you know who that is? And his son was like maybe four years old. He said, I know who he is. That's the legend, Big Pun. I got teary-eyed to see sure. somebody, my brother we bought in the game for a little kid to the future generation to be like, oh no, that's the legend. Dad, that's, that's Big Pun. And so the energy Latinos had never ever seen or felt any energy, some dominance in the hip hop game like when Big Pun was out here. 
that's the best. I won't settle for less. I want to get a brunette when I forget a brunette. Video music box, big fun off the hook. <laughs> Dog, capital punishment, man. Congratulations. Thanks, man. It's my friend, though. I ain't no like this, but they give me the love, you know what I mean? So, so, so Joe, you know, I'm in the Bronx. I got to get some food. You got to give me some suggestions, you know, because this is all about culture and food and music. Man, if you made a U-turn on that bus and you went one block up, there's like a Spanish coochie Frito on the left-hand side that your wife would love and you would feed the whole bus for $12. Yeah, that's what we need. <laughs> that Joe, man, appreciate you. Bro. All right, Ralph. Love. Love you, my brother. Love you. Big up to my man Fat Joe for looking out for me. This is something special right here. When you head up to the Bronx or any Spanish restaurant, they're gonna let you know this is how it's going down, all right? DJ Clue, the legend. You know, this guy is hard to get, man. <laughs> Ralph McDaniels, that's my guy right there. So Clue, tell me how you changed the game with the mix CDs, man. Because everything was taped before that. I was doing the mixed tapes and stuff, and then, uh, you know, I, I just knew that the game was going to change. So first I started doing like the mini discs, and then I started doing the CDs. Like, you know, like the, the Clue tape was like the internet, you know what I mean? That's where you got your new music, your, your fix from. All the new artists, you know what I'm saying, exclusive music. So from there, they started taking stuff, all my mixtapes and playing on the radio with my voice on it because that was the only way that they could get it. So then, um, you know, it got to a point where they was like, yo, man, we might as well just give you a show up here, man. So they gave me a show up there. From doing that, MTV called me. I started doing MTV. I did MTV for like five years. And then from there, I, I got my own full-time, primetime show on radio, you know what I mean? So if you, if you stay focused and, um, you know, just don't never doubt yourself, man. You can do big things. So now you known for the exclusives, but did you ever get in trouble for playing something you wasn't supposed to play? <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, once one time uh, when, when Biggie was alive, uh, he ain't know how I got his music, and um, he got on the radio and said, "Yo, Clue, I'm looking for you, man. When I see you, it's on." Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? So we had a little bit of tension for a little while, but we ended up. Uh, I called Puff. We ended up working it out, and you know what I mean. They didn't know me at the time. We had some mutual friends, so we, we we talked it out, man, and worked out like man, man. So it, it became a, a healthy relationship. I have so many questions. I have to catch up with the Grandmaster. Grandmaster Cash! What's up, baby? I have so many questions! I got you, I got you. We in the Bronx, come on, man! Let's make it happen. So, Cash, we are on the Grand Concourse, which is also where the Bronx Walk of Fame is. You have a street sign or a, a proclamation up on one of these poles, man. How did that happen? The Bronx Walk of Fame has been going on during Bronx Week for uh, over over 20 years, and there's been over 11 hip hop inductees to the Bronx Walk of Fame. Yeah. I was nominated in 2008. I received my plaque Early. in 2008, yeah. so mine is right across the street. When did you get started, first of all? 1974, oh, I oh. guess was my introduction to hip hop versus a b-boy dancing at, you know, parties, block parties, house yes. parties. Yes. And then I uh, just graduated to the turntables. You know, I, I got tired of being all one of a whole lot of people dancing. I wanted to be the one person that make everybody dance. But that DJ is, it's, it's important for a number of reasons. I went to DJ role too. First of all, 
the girls are really focused on you when you're the DJ. Of course. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when you when you dance, you can only dance with a girl one at a time. Hey. Okay? And remember this. When you're a B-boy, you can't ask a girl to dance and right. be like, yo, wanna dance? Bring her out to right. the dance floor, then you be like, right. <laughs> She'd be like, what the? <laughs> but I want to talk about your group. The Cold Crush Brothers. Incredible, groundbreaking, battled everybody across the universe. But you had a style of harmonizing in your music. Please explain to the audience what that was and why you did that. Well, it wasn't so much harmonizing as it was unison, okay? Because we discovered, and I looked at old groups from back in the days, and I saw that when they all come together, it sounds stronger. Mm. Yeah. So the Temptations, each one of them had a distinctive voice. Yes. Okay, but when they all sing together, yes. there's nothing like the sound of that harmony. Now, our groups followed in the tradition of groups like the Funky Four and, uh, of course, the Furious Five back yes. then, and it was about groups and groups doing uh, routines in unison. So we just decided to take that routine thing to another level, and uh, my old... Um, my old musical influences kicked in from the WABC radio days. Ah, 77 WABC. Yes, okay. Uh, we sound way old right now. So all of those songs <laughs> that played on the radio, as well as all the um, so-called black music, yeah. um, were all mixed for me. Yes. So when I decided to start writing routines, I wrote routines based on those songs I heard on yes. WABC. Y'all kind of took it to a whole nother level. Feel like. Since y'all were going around the whole city battling people, you had to take it to another level. <laughs> I mean, what it was is that we were trying to be elite. We, yes. were, we were trying to step up the ladder of eliteness as far as uh, hip hop groups were concerned. The there's, marquee groups of the day. There's levels to this. Yes, definitely. And the marquee group of the day was, of course, the Furious Five. Yes. Uh, every group, um, admit it or not, yeah. you know, try to pattern themselves in that mold or, yeah. or, or go beyond it. And uh, we just try to transcend that level and um, add some of my early musical influences to uh, the table of routines that were being done at the time. Awesome, awesome. Grandmaster Kaz. All right. See, I am Grandmaster Kaz, and I like to say hello to the kids. Chef spot, peace and blessings, the jerk spot. I mean, this is what we're talking about. Jerk chicken. What up, Kev? What up, Uncle Ralph? What you got for me, man? I got some jerk chicken meal with that hard dough bread for you. All right, jerk chicken, hard dough bread. Big up all the Caribbean crew. Big up my man Kev. Yes, sir. We doing it right here. We on Burnside and University. BX, stand up. We still out here. Oh man, this is incredible. Look at this, all these artifacts of the early hip hop days. This is from 1980 to 1985. We are in the Universal Hip Hop Museum's pop-up called Revolution of Hip Hop. Incredible artifacts, that's all about hip hop. Cool DJ Red Alert, Run DMC, Wild Style with my man Fab Five Freddy. Big up to the whole crew, all the people that were down and part of that film. Mr. Magic, the first guy on radio to really bring hip hop to the airwaves. Video Music Box, we started in 1983. This is my thing right here, you know. Make sure you check this out, because we're in the Boogie Down Bronx, and that's the way it goes down. 